Hey, today we figured out how to take our campground and turn it into a rotational grazing pasture for our animals. So come graze with us. Howdy, and welcome to the Bar SC Ranch, where you will experience our journey of running a family business, caring for animals, and doing life together. Subscribe now and be inspired here at the Bar SC. Hey, here we are all together getting ready to rotate our animals, do some uh, holistic grazing. So we're gonna show you a little bit uh, the practices that we use to help rotate our sheep and our goats throughout the entire campground here to maximize the natural resources of grasses, hopefully to do some weed eating, which then I don't have to do with the weed eater or Colton. So we're gonna put these sheep to work. We're gonna show you how we move panels and uh, the benefits of using rotational grazing to feed your animals and manage your ground. So hang with us, let's get rolling. Okay, so today we're moving um, actual panel panels. Normally when we do rotational grazing, we would use hot wire fence. When I say we, that would not be us. We have, we have a guest business where we invite people to come um, to the ranch and stay with us. And hot wire and guests are, are not always a good combination. So we usually actually do very little rotational grazing and we feed our animals more hay that we purchase from the feed store or from other ranchers. Um, but obviously at this time when we need to utilize more of the grass that's growing, we are using our arena panels. So these are very lightweight panels, uh, relatively lightweight panels, that normally comprise our outdoor um, rodeo and roping and, and uh, barrel racing arena. And we've brought it out here to our campground and we are making uh, pens for the goats and sheep to be in. The downfall to this paneling is that our sheep are actually quite wily and they're very strong. So a lot of them all the time. Yeah, a lot of them are, are uh, over 300 pounds because they're full grown big sheep and um, they can just lift the panels up. So once we put the panels out, we actually have to put T posts into the ground and wire them hard to those T-posts. Um, if you saw at the beginning of the video, none of the enclosures were in squares like they had originally been, um, because even with the T-posts, the animals managed to push them around and <laughs> reconfigure them. This year is geometry, so they yes. were practicing their different shapes. <laughs> It's so I don't know annoying. What shape they were going for. It's not one that I'm aware of, <laughs> but sometimes it makes us want to give up because it's so hard to keep them enclosed yes. and then um, keep them actually grazing the area that we want. So uh, we are hoping to get the grass down to I don't know about an inch off the ground, or I'm sorry, like two inches off the ground um, at a good healthy level, so that it'll grow back really quickly once we move the livestock off of it onto a new um, patch of grass. Goats and sheep are way better for the ground than horses. Horses kill the ground and the grass. Goats and sheep, you can actually get it to grow back again. So not only. It. Do they not pull the plants out by the roots because they have a dental pad on the top? We'll show you that in another video where the sheep don't actually have top teeth, but they also have the cloven hooves, which aerate the soil. Like two, so, two, two toes. Our goats and sheep 
and we have some different kinds of goats and sheep in here. So we have Legolas, and he's the big boar um, that's closest to the fence. Then we have Lovebug with the pink collar. We have Kit and Cat are the two babies, and their mom is Carmel, kind of the tan-colored goat, and their dad is Legolas. And then we have Luke and John, and they're Katahdin hair sheep that we bottle raised from, we got them when they were about two days old. So we're standing at a dividing line between an area that we had goats and sheep in about five or six days ago and an area that has yet to been grazed by the goats and the sheep. So you can see a lot of this is new growth actually. So they had eaten it down a bit further than this by about an inch or two actually to the ground and before we move them. So we move them before they've killed off all of the grass. You can see a little area right there. And that's what happens when they're grazing on an area and it's rainy. So that's not as great for the ground, but of course we can't tell it not to rain. And the rain is what really helped this section start to grow back again and start to grow up. And so this is what we've been putting the goats out on. That's not ideal um, because of the rain. And this is what we're looking for right here is that perfect level of they ate most of it down, but there's a lot of area for it to then grow back up again. And Kylie's gonna show you Luke's teeth to explain how it is that the goats and sheep are so good for the ground. Yeah, so if you wanna come in a little closer, you can actually see that he only has one set of teeth. So he has bottom teeth, but no top teeth. Now this is really helpful for grazing because as the sheep and goats are eating the grass, they aren't pulling the whole root out from, of the plant. They're just pulling off the tips of the grass. And that's really good because then the grass can regrow. So horses, they have uh, teeth, teeth on both the top and the bottom. So they actually grab and if you watch a horse eat, they'll pull it up by the root, you'll see you know, dirt hanging off the bottom, clumps of dirt, because they've actually pulled it up. And that's, you know, grass that will never grow back again. If you've pulled it up by the root, it's just like how you weed. It's not going to grow back. Um, goats and sheep, you know, never are doing that. They're always just trimming the top. It's like taking a lawn mower over your grass versus digging it all up with a shovel. You know, one, it's gonna grow back. The other one, you now have no more lawn. Um, another thing, Kylie, do you wanna show them Luke's foot? Yeah. You'll see that Luke has two, two toes which is way better for the ground. So they actually, if you've ever heard of aeration that people will do on their lawn, it allows um, water to seep through, it allows air to seep through, minerals and vitamins into your lawn if you aerate it, which means poke a bunch of little tiny holes. And Luke's feed, all kinds of goats and sheep hooves are the exact same way. They have two little holes that are basically little aerators. It's like they're going around aerating your ground all the time. Whereas a horse has a big circular foot that's very flat on the bottom. And so they pack the dirt down. They pack the dirt down. Nothing can grow back up. It's like walking around and stomping around all in your dirt and then expecting your seeds to be able to, you know, grow back through this really hard packed in surface. It's not good for the ground. So not only do they dig it up by the root, but then they pack it all into the ground and nothing can grow again. So really not good grazers. No. <laughs> so if we put horses out here, we'd maybe get one lap around and then we wouldn't be able to then put them back on the same area like this. You know, in a few weeks when we've gone around the whole pasture, the goats and sheep can go right back out here and it's yep. going to be wonderful for them. They're going to have a whole bunch of food again. If they were horses, that wouldn't be the case. All right. Well, since uh, we're not using hot wire and we're having to be scrappy and innovative and use our horse panels, unfortunately, they're very light panels and 300 some pound goats and sheep do a great job at removing the panels and just taking them and uh, throwing, them, throwing them off the hinges and dumping them on the ground. So. We're having to uh, pound T-posts and every time we move the panels, uh, as you can see, there's some T-posts here that we're marking the edges. We got to put a T-post at every corner. So we got this handy dandy little picket puller. So these are called pickets. We got a picket puller. This is our picket pounder. So Colton will pull the picket and take it over to the, to the, new, uh, the new arena over there. And I'll take this big old heavy deal and put it over the top and pound the pickets in. And we'll, uh, we'll put pickets at every corner and wire them in and hopefully the goats and sheep won't get out.